After Stone Cold Steve Austin worked with Bret the Hitman Hart at WrestleMania 13, the Texas Rattlesnake was set to become the World Wrestling Federation's biggest star. Up until Mania 13, Stone Cold had been working as a heel, with his main rival being the Hitman, but fans were beginning to cheer for Austin while booing a guy who had portrayed a hero throughout much of his WWF tenure. Times were changing, wrestling fans were getting tired of cheering for the squeaky clean good guys, people wanted to get behind the cool bad guy characters, and it really didn't get much cooler than Stone Cold Steve Austin in 1997. Following the WrestleMania 13 submission match with Bret Hart, Stone Cold's journey to the WWF Championship had officially begun. And in today's video, we will cover Steve Austin's career from WrestleMania 13 to WrestleMania 14, taking an in-depth look at Stone Cold's quest to become the World Wrestling Federation's biggest star. On the March 31st, 1997 edition of Monday Night Raw, one week after WrestleMania 13, Steve Austin had an interview with Vince McMahon in the ring that really set the tone for what the Stone Cold character would be going forward. Stone Cold talked about the WrestleMania submission match, saying he passed out due to blood loss and therefore Bret Hart didn't make Stone Cold submit. After this, Austin talked about how his character would not change for anybody, and it's this part of the interview that I think is most important. Austin said, you can look at Steve Austin and you can think whatever you want. The bottom line is, I ain't changing for nobody. Whether you've got me against a good guy and the people boo the hell out of me, or you've got me against a bad guy and they cheer me, it doesn't make a damn. I'm the 1996 King of the Ring and all I set out to do when that bell rings is whip somebody's ass. And you don't have to like how I do it, but I'm damn sure going to get the job done. These couple of sentences kind of set up what we would expect to see from Steve Austin in the months, even years that followed. It would have been incredibly easy to make Steve Austin a standard wrestling babyface after WrestleMania 13, but that wasn't going to happen. Instead, Austin would remain in the grey area. He wouldn't align himself with good guys nor bad guys. He would just be Stone Cold Steve Austin, and that was extremely important. We are all aware of Vince McMahon's Attitude Era promo a few months later where he said people were getting tired of good guys versus bad guys, and here you had Steve Austin pretty much saying he wasn't going to be a heel or a babyface long before Vince McMahon evolved the WWF with this exact same mindset. It worked for Stone Cold. People wanted to see a guy who didn't follow the rules, a true rebel not only because of how he cut his promos or how he wrestled his matches, but because of how he brought broke the mold, how he didn't follow the traditional path of becoming a main eventer. Steve Austin's rise in wrestling would legitimately lead to the whole company changing direction from a creative standpoint. Bret Hart interrupted this promo, reiterating that he beat Steve Austin at WrestleMania 13 while saying that Stone Cold is nothing but a hyena while Bret Hart is the king of the jungle. Bret said that he was through with Stone Cold, he wanted to move on, but Austin said that Bret would have to kill him for this rivalry to end. It looked like we would be getting more Bret vs Austin matches and I for one didn't complain. In Your House Revenge of the Taker then, held on April 20th 1997, would feature a Bret Hart vs Steve Austin rematch in the main event spot, and this match here is kinda the odd one out when people talk about the Hart vs Austin rivalry. While it isn't a bad bout at all, it just wasn't as good as the Survivor Series 96 or WrestleMania 13 encounters. The newly formed Hart Foundation hit the ring to attack Austin at around the 20 minute mark, so Steve Austin got a disqualification victory here, a relatively cheap finish for a rivalry that had so much heat at this point. Nonetheless, the victory at Revenge of the Taker gave Steve Austin a WWF title shot the very next month at In Your House, a cold day in hell. This was the first time Steve Austin challenged for the WWF Championship on pay-per-view, at least in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Steve had main evented the final four pay-per-view for the WWF Championship back in February, but a cold day in hell was Steve's first proper shot at the WWF Champion in a singles match setting on pay-per-view. 
Austin versus Undertaker was good here. I thought this match was better than the Revenge of the Taker main event, but the finish again included interference from the Hart Foundation. Brian Pillman rang the ring bell prematurely, which caused a distraction. Undertaker was able to pin Steve Austin, and the show ended with another Austin versus Hart Foundation brawl. On the May 26th episode of Raw is War, Austin and Shawn Michaels teamed up to defeat the WWF Tag Team Champions Owen Hart and Davey Boy Smith. Remember what I was saying earlier about Austin staying in that grey area and not aligning himself with baby faces or heels? Well, Stone Cold's partnership with Shawn Michaels goes a long way in reinforcing the idea that Stone Cold only cared about Stone Cold. On paper, Austin and Michaels was a dream team, especially in 1997, but the two couldn't coexist. Austin didn't care about Michaels and Sean was on the brink of a heel turn himself so while this team wouldn't last very long, the whole storyline acts as a great example of where the WWF were going at the time. Remember, good guys versus bad guys was, in Vince's words, passe. The June 2nd episode of Raw would see Steve Austin and Shawn Michaels attack each other during a title defence against the Legion of Doom, and to settle their differences, the tag team champions would wrestle each other at the next WWF pay-per-view, King of the Ring. I really like this match too, it isn't a classic, but to me, it signifies change in the WWF. Originally, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels were going to lock horns at the King of the Ring with the Hart Foundation handcuffed to the ring posts to prevent an interference, and if Brett couldn't beat Michaels in under 10 minutes, he would never wrestle in America again. Brett had a knee injury at the time, so I assume a Heart Foundation member would have interfered somehow, but the match never happened either because of the mounting tension between Hart and Michaels backstage, or the knee injury was too severe for Brett to risk even a short match. Also, during the Austin vs Michaels match, a special Olympian tried to jump the guardrail to get at Steve Austin. The kid was a Shawn Michaels fan and so this created a situation that the WWF never had to deal with before on live TV, as it would have been extremely wrong to take care of this fan in the more traditional manner. The opening moments of the match were interrupted a few times, but it's quite heartwarming when Sean takes control of the situation while trying to calm the young fan down a little. Austin holds the ropes open for Michaels after Sean escorts the kid up the entranceway, and it's just one of those unscripted moments on pay-per-view where the guys had to break character and thankfully everything turned out alright in the end. The match ended in a double disqualification after both men attacked referees. It was an inconclusive end end of the match unfortunately, but Sean and Steve's paths would cross again very soon. From here, Stone Cold would travel to Calgary, Alberta, Canada to take part in a 10-man tag main event, the Hart Foundation vs Austin and Ken Shamrock, the Legion of Doom and Goldust, and this match is considered by many to be one of 1997's best main events. The hometown heroes may have won the match, but there were also a fair amount of Stone Cold fans in attendance during this show, proving that Austin's popularity was growing at an extremely fast rate, even in enemy territory. Of course, the majority of the audience were behind the Hart Foundation, but look closely and you'll see more than a few Stone Cold shirts in the arena. I just want to mention too that I absolutely love Steve Austin's entrance at Canadian Stampede. Stone Cold looks so ready to step over enemy lines, he isn't nervous and he isn't afraid, he's laughing all the way to the ring, and it just makes for a real badass entrance. Surprise surprise, Shawn Michaels forfeits the tag team championship due to injury and Stone Cold Steve Austin is left without a partner. Stone Cold announced he would defend the tag titles on his own, he didn't need a partner, and so Austin was scheduled to face Owen Hart and Davey Boy Smith on the July 14th episode of Raw. During the closing moments of this match, a debuting Dude Love showed up to offer his assistance, Stone Cold accepted the help, and Dude Love and the Texas Rattlesnake became the new tag team champion. Champions. This one's worth watching just to see Stone Cold's facial reactions when Dude Love makes his way to the ring.
Jumping back to Canadian Stampede, the 10-man tag match ended when Steve Austin was pinned by the Intercontinental Champion Owen Hart. This set up a feud between the two men, a feud that would completely alter the remainder of Steve Austin's career. Austin would be getting an Intercontinental title shot at SummerSlam 1997, but things took a real turn for the worse when Owen hit Austin with a pile driver and Stone Cold landed right on his head. It's one of those clips that's still hard to watch and it looks incredibly scary. Whether you're a fan of wrestling or not, you just knew that this was serious as soon as the pile driver was delivered. Austin suffered from temporary paralysis after the move and later Stone Cold was diagnosed with a broken neck. Still, Stone Cold tried to finish the match with a weak roll up. Austin had just became the Intercontinental Champion but it came at a huge, huge cost. Steve had to change his whole ring style after the accident. He went from a technically sound performer to a brawler and to be honest, the change in moveset still fit into Stone Cold's character very well. Still, Austin had to forfeit the tag titles and the Intercontinental title, but Stone Cold ensured the IC title would stay around the waist of Owen Hart so the Texas Rattlesnake could face the King of Hearts once again for the gold. The rematch happened at the Survivor Series in Montreal. Stone Cold captured the Intercontinental Continental title once again, but there's an argument to be made here that Stone Cold returned to the ring much too soon. In the build up to the Owen Hart match in Montreal, Austin delivered a Stone Cold stunner to Vince McMahon for the very first time. Vince McMahon was trying to tell Austin that fans cared about him and the fans didn't want Austin to further aggravate his neck injury by getting physical at wrestling shows. Austin didn't want to hear it and after delivering the stunner to Vince, Stone Cold was arrested in Madison Square Garden while the audience went totally nuts. This was the beginning of the Austin vs McMahon rivalry to me. Austin had laid hands on his boss in the middle of the ring and while Vince wasn't forthcoming straight away about his feelings towards Stone Cold, you could tell that Mr McMahon wasn't too happy with the prospect of Steve Austin moving up the cards, in storyline anyway. Vince would admit soon that he didn't want Steve Austin representing the WWF as champion but more on that in a moment. Following the Owen Hart match at the Survivor Series, Steve Austin would begin feuding with The Rock, a rivalry for the ages that would span across multiple WrestleManias in the years that followed. The feud was centred around Rocky stealing the Intercontinental Championship. However, Steve was able to defeat The Rock at In Your House Degeneration X to retain the title and regain possession of the title belt. As Stone Cold had used a pickup truck in the In Your House match and because Austin attacked an official during the same bout, Vince McMahon ordered a rematch the next night on Raw. Austin decided to defy Vince's orders, Stone Cold forfeited the title and gave it to The Rock before throwing the belt off a bridge and into a river the following week on Raw. Something that you may have noticed here is that there were a lot of forfeited WWF titles in 1997. The IC title was forfeited for a reason, though Stone Cold Steve Austin was getting prepared for a WWF Championship run, the man couldn't be denied any longer. Stone Cold's popularity exploded over the course of 1997 and it was like nothing the WWF had ever seen before. Ticket sales were up, Austin 316 shirts had become the number one piece of wrestling merchandise, fans had grown to love the Texas Rattlesnake and it was time to go all the way with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Bret Hart had left the World Wrestling Federation for WCW, Shawn Michaels was now a heel WWF champion and the plan was for Steve Austin to defeat Shawn at WrestleMania 14. The first stop was the 1998 Royal Rumble. Stone Cold would win the Royal Rumble match as guest celebrity Mike Tyson watched on from a skybox. Following the Royal Rumble match, Shawn Michaels defended the WWF title against The Undertaker in a casket match and tragedy struck when Shawn clipped his back off the side of the casket, resulting in Shawn not being able to walk the next morning when he woke up. With the WWF title match at WrestleMania in jeopardy, it was decided that Shawn Michaels would not work any further matches until the Mania main event. Stone Cold would have his hands full in the meantime though. The night after the Royal Rumble, Vince McMahon was about to make an announcement that involved Mike Tyson in WrestleMania 14. Steve Austin interrupted the festivities by flipping off the baddest man on the planet. A giant brawl broke out and Vince McMahon was seething that his big planned WrestleMania announcement had been ruined by Steve Austin. 
Nonetheless, Mike Tyson's involvement with the WWF made headlines. Media outlets who had never bothered looking at wrestling before were now all of the sudden very interested due to Tyson. So if Vince McMahon wanted more eyes on the World Wrestling Federation, then bringing Tyson in for WrestleMania 14 was definitely a smart move. The plot thickened on the March 2nd 1998 episode of Raw when we thought Shawn Michaels was about to throw down with Mike Tyson, only for Mike to reveal he had just became the newest member of Shawn's Degeneration X faction, so the odds were seemingly stacked against Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania. The March 17th episode of Raw featured an interview with Vince McMahon conducted by Kevin Kelly where Vince McMahon would draw the line in the sand and finally admit to the world that he did not want Steve Austin to win the WWF title. This is a really significant moment in the Austin vs McMahon storyline yet it's never brought up and it isn't only YouTubers or wrestling websites that never mention this interview but even the WWE themselves seem to have forgotten about this segment. Up until this episode of Raw, Vince McMahon had tolerated Steve Austin. Austin had, in the months prior, tormented WWF staff and officials much to Vince McMahon's dismay, yet Vince still hadn't gone full blown heel against Steve. When Tyson and Austin had their scuffle on Raw, Vince screamed that Austin had ruined everything, but still, Vince had not explicitly said that Steve Austin was his enemy. During this interview, Kevin Kelly flat out asks Vince if he wants to see Stone Cold as the WWF Champion. Vince smirked before saying it doesn't matter what he thinks, it's all about the fans opinion. McMahon said that Austin would need to change if he became WWF Champion as his current image would be a public relations and corporate nightmare. Kevin Kelly kept pushing though, everyone wanted to know Vince's personal opinion, not his professional opinion, and Vince finally gave his answer. One final time, Kevin asked if Vince McMahon wanted to see Steve Austin as the WWF Champion, and Vince replied, It's not just a no, it's a oh hell no. And Steve, that's the bottom line because Vince McMahon said so. Vince had been displaying some heel tendencies obviously in the build up towards Wrestlemania. It really all started when Austin gave McMahon the stunner in Madison Square Garden after the Owen Hart match at SummerSlam, but this was the actual turning point of the Mr. McMahon character. There was no going back after this promo. Vince had announced that Austin was the enemy and the McMahon vs Austin feud would continue on for years after this declaration of war from Vince McMahon. I won't linger on this subject any longer though, McMahon vs Austin deserves its own video and it's a project I'd love to tackle in the future. Anyway, Steve Austin's quest for the WWF Championship led him to WrestleMania 14, Austin vs Michaels with Mike Tyson as the special ring enforcer. Sean was in a lot of pain during this match, his back was busted up pretty bad and there was a lot of speculation going into WrestleMania in regards to Michaels condition, both physically and mentally. HBK and Austin are the first to admit that this match wasn't a show stealer, but still it's an important night for Stone. Stone Cold. A near 9 year journey led Stone Cold to the Wrestlemania main event and the WWF Championship and it's just good to see someone who truly deserves to be a champion finally get their chance in the spotlight. Mike Tyson swerved Shawn Michaels and aligned himself with Austin towards the end of the match. There was obviously a fast three count but anyway, Shawn had to bow out of wrestling for a while after the Wrestlemania main event and Stone Cold's reign at the top had begun. The McMahon vs Austin feud was moved to the front and centre immediately following Wrestlemania and Steve Austin's popularity along with his record breaking box office numbers continued to grow. At that very time during late 1997 and early 1998 nobody in the company deserved to be the champion more than Stone Cold Steve Austin and the Texas Rattlesnake would go on to win the WWF Championship another 5 times over the next few years. 
thanks for watching this video guys and of course this isn't the end of the stone cold videos here on wrestling bios i've uploaded a few austin videos on the channel already so if you want to learn more about stone cold have a look at what's already on offer remember to subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future steve austin videos as i don't think it will be too long before i look at steve's career immediately following wrestlemania 14. thanks again for watching and take care